Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Wave podcast here at the Culture Wave Media Network. And we are here to talk about the hotly anticipated, most talked about Penguin season one, maybe series finale on HBO. I am one of your hosts. My name is Darren Scalamoni. I am joined as always by Vinny Albano. Hello, hello. And Zach Miller for hey, the yo. finale. I'm here. I'm tapping in. We, we, yep. were trying to, we were trying to get you on for a number of weeks. You're busy, man. <laughs> hard, to, hard to get a hold of Vic. Yeah, hard, yeah. Um, and Zach is here with us to discuss the finale. There's a lot to talk about, obviously. Hmm. Um, Vinny and I have been talking about the show, obviously, for weeks. If you guys haven't been following our coverage, you can check it out. We have a whole playlist of all our episodes that we've done for the show. And we're just constantly it, the, the envelope is constantly pushed with the show, right? Um, and we were nervous in the beginning because the premiere was so good that it's like, will they be able to keep up? this level of consistently great writing and great acting throughout the whole entire series. Hmm. And I do think that they really accomplished that with this finale and with the season in general. Um, what were your overall thoughts? Just broad thoughts, no spoilers of the finale, Vinny. Oh, this was a banger. This was a certified banger. I, I think that there was a lot done in this episode that just kind of, it, it puts a beautiful bow on the entire package of this series i honestly want them to keep it as this kind of eight episode mini series you know if they do other seasons in, in, in the future i wouldn't i would be open to it but I, I just feel like this was such a beautiful package through and through that like i don't want it to be tarnished in any way i think it leads right into the batman part two in a beautiful way i think that for me the last like 15 minutes was like everything i wanted right he's he finally comes into the character of the penguin mm -hmm. he has the top hat and the tuxedo and all right the umbrella's the, hanging yeah the yeah. umbrella's hanging so he's got the the look now he we really dive in and confirm a very twisted part of his psychology he's not redeemed in the end in a way where like you know we've seen we we've kind of been tricked to sympathize for him but in the end it is confirmed that he is a devil and he will continue to be a devil uh and, and in a lot more twisted ways than one and i just thought it was so captivating through and through and i love the way that they just wrap it up and it leads perfectly into the batman and literally like like i said the last 15 minutes was it felt like it was almost ripped right out out of the comics. Like mm -hmm. even the way it was shot, like that last shot feels like a comic panel. Yeah, hundred percent. And it, but it, it's done tastefully. Yeah, Zach, you have not had a chance on the channel to, to talk about the show, but we've talked off camera. What were your thoughts on this finale and the way they were able to wrap up this awesome season of TV? Yeah, I, I, um, I really was. I was following your reviews too, and I feel like you guys were putting everything very like thoughtfully on, on just how each episode was playing out but, but like a broad thought of the series and leading up to the finale it, it seemed like the penguin and um sophia were, were encountering new issues and new subplots every episode which really kept you engaged and i really liked how they structured the the um series because like you were saying like i was wondering where this would go if it was just going to become a cat and mouse of just sophia and just oz and instead they went down lanes of Arkham. They went down other lanes of other mob families in Gotham. They really expanded the uh, city universe of like what is going on in the underworld of Gotham. So to see Oz finally take up that mantle that we all know he was going to bring up that or get up to that level at some point in his arc, that was really cool. And I thought that, for it to all mount up to this moment, given what we knew from the Batman and then filling in the dots between his childhood and um, the his adult life is is really awesome. And I, I think like Reeves couldn't have done a better job at giving us the layering behind this character and the exposure to violence and how he manipulates all these people around him and the final payoff, which was great. Um, I, you know, it's, it's always about Oz's strategy to stay one step ahead, which they refer to in the last couple episodes of like, he will always try and outplay you and in, in his conniving way. So I really liked how 
you know, if you give Oz an inch, he was going to take advantage of that in some way. I really like that. I yeah. think that um, I agree with what both you guys are saying. It's it's definitely a true <clears throat> indication to what happens in the circumstances of this episode that Oswald Cobb is a complete monster. And it is so interesting and it really does remind me so much of the way that they do it. And I know the comparisons has been talked about all season, but it really is very like Sopranos-esque the way that they make you feel like sympathetic for this really bad guy doing bad things hmm. by any means necessary just to be on top. And um, he has his code as did Tony with his family. Right. And that's what's important to him. And for, for Oz, we see it play out in this episode. You saw it a lot with last week too, um, that his mother Francis is, 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 is everything. And, um, but then there's other moments in this episode before we get into the spoilers where, there are certain indications where it's like, wow, he really would do anything to get on top. And mm. we discussed that because we were like, well, what there has to be some sort of stopping point, right? There has to be something that is going to get him thinking and have him make a mistake or, but what Zach just said too, he's always thinking one step ahead a hundred percent of the time. Mm. And you see it play out in the full dramatics of, of what this episode is when he, weasels his way into so many different situations where you really again you feel like it's going to be the end of oz and spoiler alert it's not the end of oz we 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 see his character live on <clears throat> through the end of this show and leading into batman part two um he's already confirmed in interviews now he he in the script he's in five or six scenes in batman part two and mm. he said he signed on for three movies uh that doesn't always mean that just because he signed on for three, that he's going to make it through three. Yeah. But yeah. there's still an early indication that this character that Colin Farrell has embodied mm. throughout this show and the first film is captivating enough and um, intrinsic enough into Reeves's story <laughs> that he wants to go with this, that Oz is always going to have his hands in something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just think that's really interesting. Oh, yeah. I mean, even the possibility that we're going to get three more movies with the penguin involved is that's a, that's a big possibility, you know, especially since we we're only speculating that Reeves's trilogy is going to be, you know, Batman one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. But now obviously there's a chance. It's probably a bigger chance and, and a lower chance that uh, these, a, a third movie will never be, be made but the fact that it is on the table and is signed within contract mm -hmm. is really interesting to me within this universe like will there be a fourth batman or will there be like a spinoff or be a catwoman movie or, or whatever but yeah I, I, it's just this whole series has been so captivating it's really like the definition honestly textbook captivating television like they just do so many things right with the characters and the story structure and the performances like Colin Farrell that you mentioned, it just ties it so well together. And I want to talk about uh, Kristen Milioti. Is it? Okay, so I've been pronouncing it different like every episode. That's the correct it, way. It's Milioti. Yes, okay. Milioti. Okay. I apologize to our audience <laughs> at home. Uh, so <laughs> Milioti, I love, like, we could talk about Colin. He's great. But for me, like, even in this last episode, her performance and her portrayal of Sophia, honestly, I think is just as good, if not better, in mm. a lot of scenes. Like, I just like love the ener that energy that she brings and the way they end her character with the reveal that Selena Kyle is writing to her, mm. which we speculated that Catwoman is going to yes. talk to her at one point. So, like, it makes me so excited. It makes me genuinely like so excited. I was, I was honestly like throughout this entire episode of that that scene in particular too jaw dropped like in shock because yeah. there was so much excitement for what is to come well there's so the way that this the episode is structured with the last sort of three things that we see play out are is all crazy but before oh, yeah. we even get into that and i want to talk to zach a little bit because again we haven't had a chance to talk to him so much week to week let's let's go into the scene when that leads us into the aftermath of last week's episode right mm, where mm. uh oz wakes up and uh he is he's in custody of sophia and um julian had basically um i guess it's like a hypnosis that he does on francis and and they get the real story of francis understands and is aware uh that oz killed his brothers and 
she kind of wants Rex Calabrese to be the one to maybe take out her son, hmm. which is crazy in and of itself. Yeah. But the scene with Sophia Zach and um having Francis hostage and, and they're 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 threatening to cut off her pinky finger. Um all for Oz to tell the truth and he still can't do it and bring himself to do it. What was that scene like for you as a viewer and just like witnessing like holy shit, I can't believe this guy really won't like the person that he said all this is for, he still can't bring himself to admit this awful thing that he did because he thinks he's probably right in that situation of what he did. Yeah, well, it's also just like I think the whole time he wasn't going to budge for Sophia because it was still part of his plan. He's like, I'm not going to do this because my plan is is not to acknowledge this happened. Because if, if then the mom spirals, it might screw up his idea. Like he, he is sympathetic towards his mother. And then there's that whole backstory of like he needs more attention. And the only attention was the way of cutting out the brothers mm -hmm. from the family like literally and um i i think like he just has this messed up trigger with his mom that he was willing to cover his ass in two ways of like even if she did know he didn't want to actually admit it because it was part of his strategy and he didn't want that to unravel but i i thought it was really good that like she literally pushed him to the brink of like mentally and physically at this point too so i mean she stat like uh the mom stabs him too that was like her little jab at him and and just like i knew about it this kind of thing i didn't know i obviously knew he wasn't gonna die but i didn't know how far she was gonna go with like stabbing him yeah um but yeah i mean there there was just a lot of complexity built up in their relationship that sophia was trying to use that as his weakness because i think she knew that was his only weakness and he wasn't willing to budge on that at all yeah i just so. think it's so like the relationship with oz and francis is so compelling and it's it's complex it's so complex yeah. i mean yeah. again the, the fact that he really did need to completely take his brothers out of the equation in order to get the full attention that he desired and he knew what you see foreshadowed later in the episode, which we'll get to that. He understands that any weakness is not going to get him to his goal of being the king, which mm. he alludes to in his actual speech towards the end of the episode to his mother. Um, Vinny, that scene in particular, again, kind of shows that quiet nature of Sophia really understanding what it feels like when she believes that she has the upper hand in that scenario what did you think about that scene? And and again, I mean, the relationship between Francis and Oz being so complicated. Yeah, I, I find it all so interesting from like a psychological perspective too. Uh, like if anyone who has studied psychology or is a graduate of a psychology degree, I, I'm very curious to hear their input because I feel like the show really nails psychology from oz's perspective francis and sophia very well at least from someone you know third party as a perspective spectator but it is really interesting for me my interpretation with oz and francis is that he almost sort of gaslit himself in a very sociopathic way into believing that he loves his mother but i feel like and I think he does love his mother, but not in a real love, but love for, and it kind of confirms it in the last scene, but rather like he loves her for the idea that he is fighting for her. Like, oh, he's doing this for her. Oh, ma, look, I got you the, the city skyline for you, right? So... But they, he doesn't really actually care for her, you know. It's really just using her as like this, this idea, almost like the same way people use like faith in in a sense, right? Where they will fight for faith and like validation. Yeah, yeah, and I find it really interesting that way, right? Um. I think it's just really captivating, honestly. I, I keep repeating this word every week, but 
it's really and truly captivating television through and through. Like I am so invested within the nuances of particularly that scene with Sophia in the club and Francis then having a stroke due to, I, I'm assuming the stress of all of it and plus mm-hmm. her, her condition on top of that. It's just really interesting. I can't really almost, I almost wish I had a conclusion to say right but with her with francis and how she well, yeah just like with like the idea of the of this whole scene as a whole like i wish i had like a deeper conclusion but it's really just interesting that's all i can really well i love say. that sophia's perspective is basically resembling the audience yeah when she's yeah, responding and she's like i cannot fucking believe that you would let me cut off your mother's finger this yeah. is the person that you keep claiming that you're doing everything for. And I think you described it perfectly, Vinny, about how so much of Oz's perspective is just that he feels he's doing the right thing by his mother. But that's just his fucked up way of telling himself, like, no, I just need I need a reason to keep going. I need yeah. a reason to keep doing shit yeah. that is not normal. I need to like, again, he's such a monster and I mean that that's just one moment in this episode where you see it. I mean, there's another one that's obvious that we'll get to at the end. But I just think it's so interesting how they they have Sophia also present that perspective of the audience just being like, I can't believe like like it's almost like you you can't comprehend it, but at the same time you do understand because of the way that the character is Oz and you just see the way he treats people. Um, but I thought that was that was super interesting. And you keep bringing up the compelling thing like. My girlfriend hasn't watched a single episode of the show until last night. Mm. She sat and watched the finale with me and she was still reacting as if she'd known these characters through eight weeks. That's a testament to how great this show is because it makes you feel for these characters, even mm. though you're not on the journey with them. Like the, it's again, the acting and the writing is so real, so vulnerable, so authentic to like really building up these characters and making them feel fully realized. Hmm. You know what I mean? I just, it's been, it's been awesome. Um, Zach, is there, do you want to um, maybe move on to sort of what happens with the councilman and how that all decides to play out? Because that kind of leads into the next thing with Sophia. Oh yeah. Billy Walsh. Billy Walsh. Yeah. I was like, where have I seen this guy before? And I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's Billy Walsh. man. So yeah, we, we get the, um, the reference to him a couple episodes prior to this. So the penguin is obviously still involved with the corruption in the politics and stuff. Gotham. I really liked how they, like still left that widespread vein of corruption all throughout the city again, not just the mob. So, and they even allude to the fact that uh, Bella Real is the new mayor. Um, you see her on the stairs with the uh, the um, uh, cast in her arm and you know, with what happened after the Batman. I thought that was cool. Um, but they, you know, he's, he's part of the still corrupt, like part of the branch of government. So I liked how they allude to that. And the setup that the penguin is trying to stay another step ahead of what is about to happen. He knows that people are on his tail and that there's a bounty on his head. So he's like, I'm going to play chess here and do something unconventional. And um, he decides to set up Sophia, which I was, I thought was awesome. And um, yeah, I personally, so I, I guess if we'll, ju- you want to jump into that part with Sophia and how, yeah, we can talk about, yeah. I mean, at this point we've basically talked spoilers for the most yeah. part, at least vaguely, but we, we will be talking spoilers um, at this point. So Zach, go yeah, ahead. Sure. So like the, the part with Sophia, that was such a great scene for so many reasons, but specifically, you know, it's, it, I, I expected like two things to happen and what actually happened. I didn't expect because the, the, um, he sets it up. He takes her to the river. You think that he's going to shoot her. I thought that was like number one. And then number two, I thought like we were going to get like a Batman cameo or something like something batarang boom, mm-hmm. like hit her. Or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. But I, but I thought it was much more creative that they didn't defer to those two and they decided to go with the route of he knew that Arkham was her personal hell. So when he's like, oh, I'll see you in hell, she assumes that he's going to kill her. 
and um, instead arrests her, puts her in Arkham again. I definitely knew based off of what we had seen that Arkham was way worse than dying for Sophia be- because mm-hmm. the environment she was in, she's accused of doing all these things. She's not the mad woman. She wasn't the mad woman before she got into Arkham, but now she's like, oh my gosh, I have to live in this hell hole again and, and all of what is yet to come. So and she was ready to escape Gotham. I thought that was like potentially going to happen and she would come back for another movie. But mm. I think it's even cooler that she has to now like rot in Arkham yeah. and will potentially appear in the other Batman movies. So mm. it's cool that they kept her around. And I just liked how it was another example of the Penguin is outsmarting people and like people always put him down. Um, he and then explains that you know, everybody is tired of this this gig of like playing the underservant to to the bosses and all of the underlings great like sequence. kill them all. Like it was, it was a like a yeah. just a whacking sequence. I was like, this is nuts. Like this is that was a good idea. I've only seen that a few times in a couple other shows or movies, and um, but it it plays to the theme of the show too because he's trying to earn his worth. He's trying to show like I want to be boss or I want to be at least your right hand guy. And when they keep rejecting him, he's like, all right, well, I'm going to earn my own fate in this way. And he was always waiting for the right moment to make an attack move. And that was like the last final blow. Like Sophia thought she had him in the bag and like, you knew that something was up. So I yeah. thought that was, great. well, he also has yeah. the sympathy for those, for those like lieutenants and all these like different the thugs. gangs. Yeah, because yeah. That is who he was in the Batman for Carmine, which yeah. I think is so yeah. great that we got that element of Oz in the Batman that we got to see. Like we got to see him as as that sort of lackey for the lack of a better term. And then he becomes now this kingpin by the end of the series. The other thing I love that you brought up was how he tells you like um you're going to hell. And I think that so much of it is it also parallels like throughout the whole series, you're seeing the parallels between Oz and Sophia and then the parallels between Oz and Vic. And with Oz and Sophia, like Sophia talks about, I think it's in like episode five, maybe mm. when I, I think it's the dinner scene that she's having with Sal. Um, and she's saying like, I don't know, like, I don't want to kill him. I want him to suffer. And I think Sal might be the one to say it, but they're both in agreement that the best way to make him suffer is to find what it is that will make him feel something other than just like giving him the satisfaction of just killing him. Right. Yeah. And so much of what Sophie is doing in the last couple episodes, again, is like first she goes to uh, Eve's house, the the prostitute that that, uh, Oz is in cahoots with. And she gives she kind of gives him away. And then she goes and gets Francis, obviously. And that even still isn't enough. And yet he's able to flip it on her so much that she's within moments of escaping Mm -hmm. and getting out of this situation and just saying, you know what? I shouldn't have been involved in this anyway. Let me just go and do whatever else I'm going to do and fuck it. Like, this is too much for me to now being hand delivered back to Arkham where she became the hangman in the first place. And it's just like, it's so poetic in a really dark way. Um, And that kind of leads us into the the Selena Kyle um, thing that you brought up. But do you want to talk about that sequence as well with Ozan? Yeah, I I would. I mean, just kind of piggybacking off of the last thing you said, it's, it is really poetic. I think the entire episode and, and the way things kind of come full circle is there's so much dramatic irony it not just within the Sophia situation, but like within the Francis situation, within so much of this series. And it's so interesting as a audience bearing witness to this, uh, talking about the odd situation, he goes to the councilman. What I love, right. Is we're now seeing like, we're seeing the penguin become the penguin, Right. Yeah. And I love that. Like he's now, he's now getting into the politics He's like, uh, the councilman goes, you got to be clean, clean as a whistle. So now we see, and that obviously leads into Victor's uh, downfall. But he he's kind of resetting his slate. And that, for me, right, I'm going to go crazy comic book theorist again. Which probably is not best for this type of world, but... He's now getting into politics now, right? So now he's becoming the penguin. He's getting he's getting the power. Uh, what if 
Probably not in Batman Part Two. Batman Part Three. Right? I'm I'm looking really <laughs> far. I'm looking ahead. Okay. So, Bella Real, something's gonna happen to her. She's not mm-hmm. gonna be mayor anymore. Now there's a new there's a new race to be mayor. Oswald Cobb versus Harvey Dent, District Attorney. I I that's my prediction right now. So I'm calling it now. You got the receipts. Yeah, yeah I yeah. got the receipts. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Six years from now, when the film actually finally comes out, we'll see. That's pretty uh, good. But I just loved seeing that personally, like that scene, where, especially when he says "clean as a whistle." I think that was a a turning point for Oz. To... Him setting himself up for something. Bigger. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think not only that, but the attention to detail. Like, so much of the show has so many moments where it makes you, even if it holds on something a little bit too long, where you're like, that has to mean something. And it always, in Reeves' universe that he's crafted so far, and again, Lauren LaFranco, I've shouted out, week after week, he does such a great job as showrunner. Like, there's something there. He mentions Bella Real in his talk with the councilman. And then as he's walking out of the courthouse, he keeps very close attention to her in general, just has his eye on her. So I think that's a very astute sort of indication that, yes, like he understands what power means and he'll do anything in order to get where he wants to get. And for him, it's like, oh, like the first thing is embodying being the king of crime in Gotham. But what if he can hit crime even on the highest of scales? Hmm. Corruption in the government. Hmm. Like that's something that. I mean, he knew, like, I'm sure, again, there's connections to stuff with Rex. I wish we even got, like, a little bit more flashback with him and Rex to see, like, what he was seeing over this time. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, how he embodied exactly what he wanted to be. Like, what what was the first indication that he saw something from Rex that made him be like, that's exactly what I want? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But I think that's a really interesting and a, a great observation and prediction i think that would be awesome to see yeah. to see the harvey dent sort of oscob yeah play out yeah. that'd be so interesting to see mm-hmm. how they mm-hmm. would go about i that. think harvey dent fits right into this world perfectly like oh, literally seamlessly yeah. yeah yeah i totally agree with you mm-hmm. i totally agree um all right so we got through that we talked about the sophia stuff um selena obviously and her being half sisters um, you had mentioned a couple weeks ago that it was, I was basically confirmed that Kristen Milioti was going to be in Batman part two. Hmm. They talked after, there was a lot of articles that came out as soon as the finale was over on variety and Hollywood reporter. Um, it's confirmed Batman part two. Pattinson is obviously back. Farrell's obviously back. Milioti's confirmed. And so is Zoe Kravitz. So they're all coming back. We know for Batman part two, we just have to kind of see what winds up happening with potential villains. Um, you would have to assume that Gordon's coming back. So that's probably Jeffrey Wright again. And uh, Barry Keoghan, we're still not sure, but we know that he is the Joker within this world. We still have to kind of see how that plays out. But Oz gets her sent to prison. He comes back to celebrate in the hospital. His mother is a vegetable. Francis Mm -hmm. is a vegetable, despite the fact that Zach brought up before. She stabs him, and she tells him to – the last thing she says to him is, I hate you. I've always hated you, and I know what you did, and you're you're a monster, and you're the devil. That's the last thing he has – uh he figures out which what another great scene like probably i mean all of colin farrell's work has been great but like that whole fucking sequence of realizing she's a vegetable even the thing like like when uh when they're saying she's in a vegetable state and he's like her eyes are open she's obviously looking at something it's Mm -hmm. like that that feeble-mindedness of of who oz is you know like not having to come to full circle and realize that this is the way his mother is now Mm -hmm. and he could let go of her like most people would, but he obviously doesn't choose that route. Um, and it leads to it leads to a vulnerable moment for Oz in which his buddy Victor Aguilar is there to comfort him and he sees this kind of play out. And then we get the conversation with Vic and Oz. Um, Vinny, that scene mm. between Vic and Oz and how it played out, was your reaction the same as most people? Yeah, I mean, it was shocking, but... I knew it was going to happen. And it, this is this is the genius, I think, of the writing, right? Where I almost was like gaslighting myself into thinking like, no, no he can't. He can't kill Victor. And by the way, also, real sad note, I, I've loved Victor throughout this entire season. Mm-hmm. I've loved him the most in this episode. 
because we finally see his character arc really come full circle. He is taking so much initiative in this episode, and I loved seeing that. Mm -hmm. Like from the opening scene of like when he's he's uh driving with the triads and he's going into and and he's standing up for Oz and he's like, You guys don't don't care, like he could be still alive in there and and they pull out a gun and Link comes and punches him in the gut and says, like, don't speak that way or you're going to catch a bullet. But I loved seeing Victor take initiative and become something of, you know, something of value within this underground. And then his death, right? Which is very sad. I, I, I was shocked. But like I said, going back to my point, the genius of this is that in 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 the back of my head i knew i knew it was gonna happen i knew it because like oz is such a devil he even said clean as a whistle right so he had to he Cut had off all those ends yeah exactly so in the back of my head while this is happening i'm like i almost am, am, am trying to convince myself yeah, yeah. that this isn't happening Right, that uh, no, it, it can't be happening right now, and I'm just utterly shocked. And but I know on the surface that it is happening, and that this was always going to be inevitable. And that the fact that I, as an audience member, was feeling such uh, what's the word I, I learned it in psychology class actually, but I forget what the word is, but it's like the mental, the mental conflict that I was feeling, and that that is so that is a testament to how well the writing really is right because it's almost like we want to feel for him but in the end he's just so irredeemable yeah and it just left me like jaw dropped i was like shit fuck like, I know. that's that's it oz is a motherfucker yeah. i was yeah. fucking pissed <laughs> i was pissed <laughs> but again it, it creates this very visceral reaction and understandably so of knowing that he has to understand that as, and it, it really, again, the writing is so brilliant in this show, but I knew it. Like I also didn't, I really thought I had rationalized it myself. It wasn't going to happen. Hmm. And then as soon as he tells them, he goes, you know, Oz, like you're, you're with the stutter. He goes, your family, like your family now. And even the way he just goes, fuck Vic. And it's like he's saying it in a way to himself, saying like, you can't say that to me because now in, in his head, in his fucked up brain, Oz, he's like, well, I've already killed my literal family hmm. in the past to get to where I'm at. So now if you're going to view me in this different light, you're not as expendable as I thought you were, you know, like you're not as malleable as you could be where it's like if you die, it'll hurt for a minute and then I'll move on. That's not what he's feeling. Even Oz, like you can see, that's not what he's feeling, right? Even though he's an awful person. Um, but just the way, oh my God. And how, it, it's it's a great scene. I mean, they're holding on Vic just gasping for life. And he's telling him, you got a, you got a great heart. This is not your fault. Hmm. You, your, your life served a purpose. Yeah. It's just like, fuck. What killed me was him begging. Right? Yeah. Because you hear um, Renzi F Felice, do, that's his name, yes, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, he does such a good job within his delivery right there. It's so little, you can almost miss it, but it's so perfect of like he, he almost he as a character doesn't even know what's going on. Like he can't believe it. Like he's begging. Like he's like, ah, no. Like what? What are you doing? Right? And. Yeah, it's just it's so tragic. It's one of the it best shock deaths I've, I've seen in forever. Yeah, Zach, what yeah. did you think? Yeah, it was just like devastating because like when he also said like, "Oh, you have a good heart," and like you know, you had a purpose. Like he kind of just basically said like, "You don't fit into what we're doing," so like I got to get rid of you because he knew too much, and then he also like he knew that he was like a part of his soul was like incorruptible and he wasn't built for that kind of life. Mm -hmm. And what the penguin is about is like, he, you know, even earlier in the season, he's like, Oh, it gets easier. Like when he's talking about killing people, yeah, yeah. he's like, it gets easier kid. Like, you know, but it really, he, it's just, it goes to his nature, the penguins nature, because it, he always just manipulated people to get to this point. And once he's 
like fulfilled his purpose with them. He doesn't need them anymore. And he takes care of them in whatever way he sees fit. So he just didn't fit the mold of that. And um, yeah, I also low key have a theory that he's not completely dead. Like his, mm-hmm. his throat is not, he like it didn't, he didn't fully die. Like, Interesting. like maybe he, maybe he didn't fully uh, what it break his neck or like his windpipe or whatever. I think he's not fully dead. Like, I mean, it would be a little bit of a cop out if he came back and mm. you know, he's like, Oh, I'm not dead or whatever. But like, I could also see him taking on the, the alias Victor Zaz and like coming back and like trying to mess with him. Interesting. But like further down the line, yeah. I don't know, but cause well, it, it could be cool. Like something that the penguin didn't see coming. And then a person that has a very, practical revenge method yeah. motive mm-hmm. well i will say like um the social media i don't follow the account but i got a notification today that the batman twitter account put out like a missing persons report for victor Ooh. aguilar oh, which damn. i thought was cool and again Ooh. i just love the way sometimes that the marketing can work hand yeah. in hand like that the one thing you brought up zach that i i, I love that you brought it up and we have to talk about it because it's episode uh, yeah i think it's episode six when he kills uh what's the dude's name you know um it's like Spider Fisher. Like. Yeah, well, I was the, thinking about the, Spider the from that, Goodfellas. That, that yeah. <laughs> oh, squid. 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 Yeah, squid. Like, squid. Spider. When, yeah, from when he Goodfellas. Kills him, yeah. When he kills Squid and he has that reaction and Oz tells him it gets easier. Then we get in the next episode the real indication that oh no, it was very easy for Oz to fucking kill his own brothers. Hmm. Yeah. He didn't yeah. really think twice about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Which is deranged, and yeah. it's just like it's a perfect indication of of what Zach just said. It's like. Oh no! Like yeah, he's he's totally aware that that Vic has too much of a heart to to make it in this world. Even though you're seeing, like you talked about, Vinny too, it's a, there's a full indication in this episode that he's taking initiative between the gangs. Then he kills somebody when uh, they're killing Sophia's guards. He has a gun and he shoots somebody and kills someone. Mm-hmm. Like he he's he's embodying this. Mm-hmm. He wants to he wants to be there for Oz, and he has empathy and sympathy for Oz as a character and as a person who took him under his wing, as he says, and then to, to see it. Oh man. It's just like, it's one of those moments where you're just like, Oh, I get it. I totally understand. But fucking why? And mm-hmm. it's definitely a testament to Renzi Feliz. Cause he was, he was somebody I wasn't super familiar with. I obviously after I had done a little bit more research, I saw he was like one of the leads in the runaways, which we talked about, but like what a showcase for him as an actor and and going head to head toe to toe with Kristen Milioti and Colin Farrell on this show and, and really making you feel that that sympathy for that character and, and having everyone I've talked to that has watched this show screamed at the TV. Hmm, like yeah. everybody I talked to was like, yeah. oh, my God, no. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, but you totally understand that that was going to happen because how else does he get there as the penguin? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wrapping up the thoughts. The other thing that is interesting, though, because we've talked about now, obviously, he kills Vic uh francis is still in the vegetative state and he brings her up and she's in the penthouse now all by herself in her hospital bed as a vegetable not able to talk not able to do anything and and still justifying his actions it's crazy because eve is still alive Hmm. playing the part of his mother that was crazy in the dress that was messed up but it's like the the craziest thing with that as we've been talking about like these connections with characters she's the one that gave him away yeah which she she probably doesn't know yeah. He's obviously not aware. Yeah. But it's just like, holy shit, man. Mm. Like, he's keeping her alive. Yeah. Like, he hasn't questioned her one time. Yeah. And I think to add to that is, I think he will continue to keep her alive because that's his weak spot, right? Yeah. That's, you, Zach, you said it before, right? The validation. And the he attention. Like, attention, those two yeah. women in his life have given him that attention and the validation. So, hmm. like, she's always been there for him in, like, a fetishized way. Or, yeah. like, you know, you can do my bidding, like, for what, whatever, like, he envisions, like, she can do. And she's all, wasn't she, like, a prostitute, right? Yeah, and then she, she's yeah. now basically running all the dancers at the club. And right. But it's interesting because it goes back to that other thing we discussed where Oz understands where she came from. Right? right, being that lower level person in her position, yeah. and she was seeing yeah. all these women die at the hands of Carmine, and and Oz was there for her, mm. and and it's just so crazy to see like she's the only one that would do this with him, like dressing up as his mother, 
calling him her baby yeah. boy, that was saying you're the king, up. baby. This is all you. I'm like, oh yeah. my god, this is nuts. And it's so fucked and it's so <laughs> twisted, yeah. but it's so twisted in like the perfect way, right? It's like, I don't know. It reminds me of like. I think like one of the best plot twists of all time is Old Boy, and of how twisted oh, that God. plot twist is. Yeah, that was. Messy. And this just adds to like, yeah, he's a villain. Yeah, he is a villain. The mystique like, of how awful he is. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it confirms that whole uh, what you said before, Zach. Or the attention and the validation. He's literally dressing up, or she's literally dressing up as, as his mother, Francis. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's so crazy, uh, but it adds that level of complexity and that level of i think needed quote-unquote fucked upness yeah that we i want to see from a villain 100 you know? percent. and then we get the zoom out and the great as you said comic uh it looked like a comic ascent it looked like a comic panel of we get the zoom out and where he's living in this in this giant penthouse mm. and then we get the batman signal that goes on right before the credits start to roll. Well, i just love too she's like yeah there's no one that can stand in our way now too and they did the bad signal i was like yo that was icing on the game it's right awesome now. and it's a yeah. perfect lead-in to batman part yeah. two and exactly what i think matt reeves set out to do with this show because i think when the show was first announced people were kind of hesitant it's like oh we're still going to go down this route where we're going to keep doing these spinoffs for characters and this is how we're going to do but this is a justified real progression and moving the goalposts of this world and this universe mm -hmm. that matt reeves has created within gotham and within the batman and, and everything like that um i also just wanted to say too like this show i i commend matt reeves for not selling out in moments where he could have easily opened up an entire new character that we've seen in Batman's anthology. It's been like, oh, here's an Easter egg. Like, here's this person. Here's this person. Like, he could have sprinkled that in, which is like what Gotham did years ago when they started. They're like, oh, here's these people. Like, they're just dangling them in front of us. Like, oh, that's cool. Like, how is that going to... Like, that show, Gotham, hinged on the fact that, oh, these are origin stories for people. So let's just throw, like, eight different ones in this season. And yeah, yeah. underdeveloped and just wacky, like, storylines... <laughs> So with this one, it's very commendable that he also didn't lean into bringing in Batman. He didn't lean into we need 8,000 villains to establish. Like, didn't rush it like the previous DC EU had. Hmm. He's like very slowly unveiling what makes these characters tick. And, you know, he could he could have just done very rushed things, but he didn't. And he he decided to stick with what makes the penguin the penguin. Who are his rivals? What does the underworld look like in Gotham? And there are so many moments you forget you're in a Batman related show, which is exactly, I think, what he was trying to do. So it, it adds this dimension to the next couple films because you see different sides of Gotham. You see di different sides of the complexion of these characters. It really makes you sit with them, f almost feel their justifications. Like that is my favorite part of this show personally. So good job matt reeves for not like copping out on like simple yeah. things you yeah know? i yeah. agree it's very yeah. grounded and we talked about that very early on how how he sets the tone the, the the creators of the show and all the people that worked on it set the tone very early on of what this is emblematic of and what they're trying to build with this world and it's it still has the elements that make it part of batman but it doesn't beat you over the head with the symbolism that is needed or we've seen in the past of how they had to make it exactly like i mean even the design of the joker right is something that like even though you barely see it like we haven't even technically in canon we haven't seen the full version of what barry keoghan's joker looks like yeah you know which yeah. i think is awesome and it keeps the mystique alive with that and it's just a, it's just a brilliant show it was a brilliant show yeah um and because we're at the finale we got to discuss scores so we do have to give it a score. And Zach, we'll start with you because you haven't covered this sure. week to week. But if you have a score, um, just go ahead and give it to us. And then you can give a little justification if you would like. Yeah, sure. I'll uh, I'll give it like a 9 out of 10. I think it was it was a really great show. Um, I don't really have any issues with it. Um, but it was it was very thought out, very thought provoking. 
um been a big batman fan forever so just seeing different perspectives of gotham was like really uh rejuvenating and i i've been looking forward to dc getting it right for years now (laughs) and like since nolan's trilogy and we've had some dashes of it here and there but this is like after the first batman well the batman and then now this tv show this is like i'm all in like i can bet my chips on this like universe that reese is doing if he doesn't get interference from like warner brothers i think this is gonna be a great like anthology that he's setting up so give us a nine out of ten for sure i um i agree with everything you said i think it's super refreshing to see something as well thought out and as brilliantly written and acted as the show is um i've been i i mean you've used the word so many times in this review but i've been captivated week to week there's so much to i i can't wait to go back and rewatch the show even though i yeah. know so mm-hmm. much of what happens it's just like it's enjoyable and it's something that i'm going to return to because it's so good similar to how a lot of people have already returned to the batman even though it's only been out for a couple of years and just what matt reeves is trying to build and and Again, the Easter eggs like Zach brought up are not something that it's like, oh, you're going to go like dumpster diving on YouTube to find all these references. But it's like, oh, it's really interesting how like that cop in the Batman now is in a scene where he has a conversation with Sophia and he's very Mm -hmm. aware that something seems off. And then he's the one that actually winds up arresting her. It's like it's really, really great how it just feels like you could be a sponge to the material and it's worth it and it's worthy of continuing on oh, yeah. Yeah. um yeah. and it does suck that we have to wait till 2026 to batman part two but now there's a lot more anticipation i think that movie's gonna do crazy numbers at the box oh, yeah. office especially yeah. after this and the first one did so great i am going to give this show a 9.5 out of 10 uh my only criticism with it is a smaller one but we discussed it it was the recasting of Carmine Falcone. I just didn't love Mark Strong yeah, yeah. in that role, and it sticks in my head as a weak point. But other than that, everything else in the show I've absolutely loved. Yeah. So that uh, is my score. I echo the same exact sentiments that you guys said. I'm going to give this a solid 9 out of 10 for me, um, just because I, I try my best to avoid like the half digits and whatnots. But yeah, I, I mean... Hey, I might return back to this and give it a 10. It was really good. It was just really, really great television. So, but for now, I'm giving it a solid nine. Awesome. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed our review and discussion of the season one or series finale of The Penguin on HBO and HBO Max. It's been a hell of a journey getting to cover this with Vinny throughout the week. So we're happy we had Zach on for the finale review. Let us know in the comments. What are your guys thoughts on the finale of Penguin? What are some theories you have for the Batman part two? We, as I said, we already know that Sophia, Oz, uh, Selena Kyle, Batman, they're all coming back definitely for Batman part two, which hits theaters in 2026. We'd love to have a conversation with you guys in the comments about it. If you could also give this video a like and subscribe to us here at the Culture Wave Media Network. We're covering a, a tons of things in film and TV. We have a bunch of other stuff coming out for you guys as well soon, including interviews with industry people. So please be on the lookout for that. Also, you can follow us on social media. All that stuff is below me in the video right now. We're on Instagram. We're obviously here on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're on threads. We're doing a bunch of stuff for you guys. So please be sure to check that out if you can as well. Just signing off, I am Darian Scalamoni. This is Vinny Albano. And I'm Zach Miller. We'll see you guys next time. This is The Culture.